an overview of all animation properties. Let's take a look at the current properties you can animate and combine together. Opacity. The classic fading and faded animation can easily be achieved by animating the opacity. By adding zero opacity to the front pane, you will get a nice fading transition. In a different scenario, you can add opacity to the tool pane and create a fade out effect. Translate. By animating the translate property, you can animate an element by moving it on a horizontal or vertical axis. The default value is percentage. Change the unit by clicking the percent symbol. For instance, if you want your element to move up by 50%, add to the from Y 50%. Combine it with opacity for an even more sleek effect. Scale. You can animate the size of an element by using the scale property. The default size is 1 and the minimum is 0. So by adding a value of 2 to the from scale, it will animate from double its size to its default size. By clicking the modifier icon next to the close icon, you can control a separate axis of the scale. So you can either animate scale Y or scale X or both. Rotation. Rotate an element fully by a specific amount of degree or click the modifier icon to control the axis separately using the wrench slider. Skew. You can adjust the skew along the X and Y axis using the skew transform property. You can use skew X or skew Y or both together. Dimensions. Animate the height N or width of an element by using the dimension value. You can use width, height or both at the same time. The default unit is percent. Click the unit to change between all kinds of other unit. Please note it's usually recommended to use scale Y or X for changing the size of an element as animating the width and height affects the layout as well. Background Position You can animate a background position to create a background parallax effect in combination with a scroll trigger and lock to the scroll bar. Background Position is a standard CSS property and may require adding both X and Y to work properly. You may also want to make the size of the background bigger than its container to give it enough space for movement. Background color, text or border color. Set the color of an element. You can enter a color manually or choose from the color picker. Filter. Create advanced animation and effect by adding CSS filters. For example, blur, brightness, contrast, grayscale, hue rotate, invert, saturate and sepia. Note. Be careful when using excessive number of filters as they may affect performance on slower devices. Repeat. By adding a repeat into the mix, you can create a looping animation. Repeat only on a specific number of times and add a delay in between each repeat. You can also enable the yo-yo effect, which basically plays the animation forward and reverses itself and then again forward. When yo-yo is disabled, the animation repeats itself from the beginning. If you want to repeat in an infinite loop, add negative 1 to the number of repeats. Stagger. Animate multiple elements one by one by adding a delay or offset in between each item. You can use a class that is distributed on all items you want to animate or add multiple selectors. In each field, add your offset in seconds. In the drop down, you can also select whether you want to animate your element from start, end, ages or random. The start order is based on the item's position in the DOM. Transform Origin Transform Origin allows you to control the starting position of your transform properties that is translate, scale or rotation by setting a transform origin to 0, 0, top left corner and using the rotation your element will rotate around the top left corner instead of the center. Custom Property Add any CSS or GSAP animatable property here. Include the property name on the left field and the value to the right field. You can add another row by clicking the plus icon at the top and you can remove the property by right clicking the input field. Ease. Make your animations more interesting by using different ease styles. In the next lesson, we're going to create an animation using the scroll trigger.